1.19.4 just came out, but what does this mean for your world? But before you update your world, I would recommend watching my video where I explain everything that you should do before updating. Now, if you've already taken advantage of those tricks, let's talk about what is different between 1.19.4 and 1.20. First, I'll take a look at everything that is new with 1.19.4 that has to do with survival. Then we'll come in and look at the creative stuff. And then lastly, we'll compare this to how it is in 1.20. For survival 1.19.4, it brings the introduction of automated jukeboxes, which is something Bedrock Edition players have, but not Java players. So if we go ahead and place this music disc in this hopper, the hopper is pointing into the jukebox and will actually push it directly into it, and it will automatically play. Another feature is that the jukebox itself will put off power whenever it's playing music. We can also use this automation to pull the disc out, but currently, since it's playing the music, the jukebox is creating power here, which is locking this hopper, so it's not able to pull the disc out. So let's wait until the music ends and see what happens. So when the music disc finishes, you'll notice that it'll actually turn off this redstone signal and the jukebox will unpower and the disc will be immediately picked up by the hopper. With this, I was able to design some pretty cool automatic music disc players which can also be used as clocks. On top of that, we can also automatically sort every single music disc into its own individual chest. So I designed this system here, which easily does that, comes through, picks up all the discs, and puts them in one by one into these chests with their individual ones. And this can be combined with my creeper farm as well as my music disc farm to get the majority of the disc in the game. I talk more extensively about this new jukebox change in this video here, which I'll link below. Java players can now easily switch out armor from their hotbar just by selecting the armor piece and then right clicking it, and this will switch out with the one that you're currently wearing rather than having to come in here and use like the number keys to switch out quickly. This will make it really nice to prepare for combat. The same ability can also be done to armor stands so you can directly switch out stuff so you don't need to have a free hand open. Now if you happen to name armor stands, before when you place them down they wouldn't keep their name when they're broken, but now if you would break armor stand, they will keep its same name. Possibly the biggest changes you'll know in survival is a change to potions. They no longer have the enchantment glint and the colors have also changed. Weakness, night vision, fire resistance, swiftness, slowness, turtle master, water breathing, healing, farming, leaping, slow falling, visibility, strength, regen, poison, and luck, which isn't normal in survival. Now when breeding horses, the babies will have a better chance at having stats that are no longer near the average. So by breeding, you can get better jumpers, more health, or make them run faster. Skulk sensors have also got a buff where they can detect more things, including when villagers use composters. New block placements can also be detected, containers closing, and interactions like cheap dying and attaching leads. Two new categories are also introduced, including things mounting vehicles as well as dismounting. When Skulk sensors notice that an item is finished, like dropping a shield, it will output a frequency of 2 rather than 14, and can also detect the destruction of shulker bullets. Blast protection will now prevent you from getting launched away so much. Tamed sitting cats will no longer sink to the bottom of the water and die. Hopper minecarts can now go ahead and find the correct items that they want to pick up among a bunch of other items more consistently. A simple wither rose farm will work once again as they fix this problem where Enderman could never get hit from the wither's projectiles which stopped this design working in 1.19.3. There's also some new settings, including control over how glittery enchanted armor is, how fast the glitter goes by, and how visually strong it is. And in accessibility, there's also a damage tilt, so how much your camera shakes when you get hit by damage. Also in accessibility, you can tweak how long you want notifications to stay on screen. This is things like unlocking recipes, advancements, subtitles, as well as when selecting items in your hotbar. You also reorganize the credits, which includes attributions and licenses. There's also this new high contrast UI, which when loaded up will change your UI so it's very easy to see. When it comes to creative changes for 1.19.4, there is a new command, which is game rules and then command modification block limit. Normally when using the fill command, you only can go up to like 32,000 block big of an area. But with this command, you can change that number to just under a billion. This works with the fill command. So we can fill in a really big area or it can clone a really big area, like cloning that chunk up into the air or using the fill biome command in a large area. This will actually change the coloring of both the leaves and grass. There's also this new game rule where you can change if you want vines to spread or not. So you can set this to false. And that way if you build anything with vines, they won't continue to move farther than where they're at. Next up is a new summoning command where you can summon text displays. And when you summon in, they look like this, which is floating text. And there's a lot of different customizations that you can do with this, like coloring, the width, how pick it is, the background, the default background, shadow, if you can see through it, as well as the alignment. Now when using this command, remember that the outside are apostrophes where the inside ones are quotes. You can also summon in block displays and using this command here, you can place in whatever type of block you want in the quotes. And then when you press enter, it's going to summon a block, but it's entity so you can actually walk right through it. 
but those only work for blocks we want items there's a separate one called item display and if you write it out like this you can choose whatever item you want to be displayed as an entity that's floating in the air as you can imagine with these new type of entities, there's a lot you can do with them. Another thing you can summon in is interactions. These are boxes which you can change out how wide and high and they will keep track of things that interact with them. So like attacks or interactions being like right click uses on them. And it'll store the information being the person who interacted with it as well as a timestamp. Then you can use this with combination with other commands. So if somebody does something to this, then something else will happen. We also have a ride command. So you can essentially make anything ride anything else. So I can make myself ride this ender dragon here, which is pretty awesome. Awesome. and it works just like you'd be riding a horse so you can actually see the dragon's health. In the creative menu and you scroll down here you can actually get access to every single painting so you can place in the same painting every time you place it. And in the operator utilities tab you get access to the paintings which are normally not found in survival minecraft. A new F3 command has been added so if you press F3 plus S it's going to unload all the textures that you have into a folder that is inside your screenshot. This is what it looks like and if you open up any of these it shows what textures you're using. We also got this new damage command, which you can choose what to damage, how much damage to give, what type of damage, and there's a lot of different types as you can imagine, and where the damage would be coming from. In this case, I'm just choosing a location, and then when we do this, it's going to create damage in that area. You could choose something like an arrow, and make the arrow damage seem to be coming from a villager, and it just kind of acts just like an arrow as well. When the player does die, you can see it says it's actually shot by a villager, which can be used like in minigames. Some improvements to current commands include the clone command can now clone stuff in between different dimensions, being able to give effects to things for an infinite duration instead of just a really big number. Execute command can also be done with if or unless, which could do stuff like check and see if a dimension is actually loaded. Execute can also do on, where you can choose specifically what type of thing should be executed upon. Execute can also do a summon command based off of a certain criteria, though if it's not like the right biome, it can say if the test passed or failed. You can also execute stuff based off where something is positioned. In using the tile command, you can choose times for days, seconds, or ticks. When using the weather command, it'll now make a duration of the weather, which is normal to the game. Data commands now have strings, so you can specify how it's being stored. The 1.19.4 is smaller changes as well as more technical changes, which is different than what 1.20 is all about. But you can get access to the 1.20 stuff if you click Experiments, take you to this page here, where you can add things in like the bundle or the new 1.20 features. But this is considered experimental. Now if you click Done and you create a new world, you now have a world which has the new 1.20 things, but you're still playing in 1.19.4. This includes a new cherry grove biome, which has new cherry blossom trees, as well as the pink petals. And I already designed some new automatic farms to let you get tons of pink petals. For this farm here, you have to wait until you actually have the biome to build it up. But with this farm here, you can just build it up now and then put the pink petals in once 1.20 is out. And with the new cherry trees, I also designed an automatic cherry tree farm, which I'll have a tutorial video on soon, but that can get you access to all the different logs, which can be crafted down to planks, which can be crafted into all the cool new pink wood types. These trees also have these really unique cherry leaves, which I'd also designed a separate farm to collect tons of while being AFK. It also comes with being able to place mob heads directly onto note blocks, and you're able to power the note blocks, get the noise from the mob which heads on top. It doesn't work with the Steve head, but it does work with all the rest of them. And in this update, they also introduced the piglin head, and you can get this new mob head from Charge Creeper. So I went ahead and designed an automatic mob head farm, which not only gets a new piglin head, but also can get the zombie creeper and skeleton head automatically. So make sure you guys are subscribed with the bell notification set to all so you don't miss out on this insane farm. And include other 1.20 features like finding camels here in desert villages, and the camels can be bred and you can also ride them. Chisel bookshelves are also introduced where books can be stored. There's also a new bamboo variant of wood. And you can already start building my farms to get tons of it before 1.20. And the introduction of, of all the different variations of hanging signs. With the experimental features, you also get access to the new brush item, which can be crafted up. And these new desert temples, as well as desert wells, have suspicious sands in the bottom of them. So if we remove the sand in this area here, we can see there is some different types. This is a new type of block, which can be used with the brush to get some new types of items including pottery shards. There is four different types of them and you can put them into a crafting recipe like this to get the new block called decorative pot. This has all the images on the sides of them but you can always choose to switch out some of the pottery shards with just normal bricks to get access to decorative pots which have images only on the sides which are pottery shards and the brick sides being blank. Besides being decorative there's currently no other use for these pots. 
What you can also find are these new smithing templates inside of different structures. Each template can be found in a different structure, and these templates can be put into the new smithing table look, which takes templates as well as an armor piece and a material piece. And this will put trim onto the armor in the design of whatever the template is. These armor pieces that are trimmed don't offer any extra buffs, but are for looks. With the 1.20 experiments, you will also need to use a netherite upgrade if you're going to upgrade any diamond gear to the netherite version of it. There are thousands of unique looks that you can get with the combination of different templates, armor types, as well as materials, and I cover them all in this video here. You can also copy the templates by using the special recipe that each of them have. Now a feature you cannot find in survival with the experiments turned on is the sniffer eggs, which are eventually supposed to be found inside of suspicious sand, but currently you can only find the spawn egg inside of the creative menu. This will give you access to the new sniffer mob. These sniffer mobs can sniff on the ground and actually dig up a new type of seed in the game and this is called the torch flower seed. These torch flower seeds can then be planted onto farmland and grown up into a torch flower. These torch flowers can be broken down and are a unique plant that can be placed down. And I've already designed automatic sniffer farms which get you tons of the torch flower seeds and another machine which automatically converts those seeds down into the torch flower plants. Check out this playlist about the newest automatic farms for Minecraft or this one for more detail on the Minecraft updates. Big thanks to all my supporters which made this video possible. You can support me for as little as $2 a month. Otherwise you can always share what I do for completely free. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.